Trumbull College boasts many famous alumni. Gary Lightbody and Johnny Quinn of Snow Patrol fame both sat in the same classrooms and were even taught lessons by some of the same teachers as current students at the school. 30 international rugby players have attended Campbell, including three British and Irish Lions and Ken Kennedy, Alexander Pedlow and Mike Gibson. Campbell boasts a fair share of politicians too, such as Lloyd Hall Thompson, Alan McKibben and Lord View, who has recently made a life peer. Undoubtedly the most famous of all old Campbellians, however, is author, essayist and Christian apologist Clive Staples Lewis, creator of the Chronicles of Narnia. C.S. Lewis was born on the 29th of November 1898 and lived until November 1963. He was born in Belfast into a Protestant Ulster family. Throughout his life he retained strong roots to Ireland. In 1910, age 12, he joined Campbell College and recorded of his time here, I rubbed soldiers there with farmers' sons. He described it as a noisy and boisterous environment, a description not unfamiliar to staff and pupils today. Sadly, ill health forced C.S. Lewis's father to withdraw from Campbell after 10 months. He was sent to a boarding school in Worcestershire that was deemed better able to cope with Lewis's respiratory problems. That said, his time at Campbell definitely left its mark on C.S. Lewis. Although debated, the description of the lamppost in the Narnia novels matches closely the lamppost at the front of school that Lewis would have passed every day on his way to lessons. In the Narnia series, the lamppost was created by Aslan from an iron bar thrown at him by the White Witch. For the children in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, it marks the entrance to Narnia. Lucy Pevensey in the novel describes how It will not go out of my mind that if we pass this post and lantern, either we shall find strange adventures or else some great changes of our fortunes. And still to this day, as boys pass the post and lantern which possibly inspired C.S. Lewis, they arrive at Campbell to find strange adventures and great changes of their fortunes, much like the Pevensey children.